Here's an example of an absolute max min problem uh, for two variables. Our function is f of xy equals xy squared. And we want to find the absolute max and min on a disk, the set of xy such that x squared plus y squared is less than or equal to 3. So here's our region. That's a circle of radius root 3. And I want to look at where this is biggest and smallest. And um, again, notice I'm drawing just the 2D picture. I'm not trying to graph this. It, I could, and that would be instructive. Or I could do the contour plot for this. If I had a really good contour plot for this, it would be very easy. I'd just read off. Where is the highest contour, the highest label of contour that intersects this disk, and where's the lowest one? But the thing to do is, how do we do that um, with calculus? And this is, I'm going to show you the way without Lagrange multipliers, which will be the next topic. Um, so the first thing is you always do the interior and do regular critical points. And so we're going to find where the gradient is 0, or in other words, where the two partial derivatives are equal to 0. So there's our two partials. If I set those both equal to 0, then y has to be equal to 0. And x, then, can be anything. Of course, it has to be between minus root 3 and root 3. So that's interesting. That's, that's a degenerate problem here because of this square, basically, in the y. We don't get an isolated critical point. We get a whole line worth of critical points. And remember, we're not interested too much in, in uh, figuring out the exact nature of that critical point for this problem. We could, in a different problem, uh, figure that out. Uh, but right now, we're just going to note that f of anything comma 0 is equal to 0. So those are the critical points we get inside in the interior. So now the, the new part, of course, for this kind of thing is the boundary. And that's where x squared plus y squared is equal to 3. You take this basically to find the boundary of a region defined by inequalities. This goes back way back like to algebra 2 you set those to be equalities. And so that's a circle of radius root 3. And um, we want to find what happens if we restrict only to that circle and just look at the values there. Well, so we really need, we've got a, a curve, and we want to parametrize it. Um, this way of doing things, we want the explicit parametrized version of the, of the curve. We're going to see in the Lagrange multiplier setting, that's how we take advantage of the implicit cur curve, which we have already. Well, we know a good way to parametrize that explicitly. We take r, which is root 3, cosine t, and r sine t. So that takes it down to a function of one variable. So f of x of t, y of t, is going to be root 3 cosine t times the quantity root 3 sine t squared. So 3 root 3 cosine t sine squared t. And so now that's just a function of t. And t goes from 0 to 2 pi. Or we really could let t be anything. And then it's just going to be a periodic function repeating over and over again on that circle. OK, so now we're going to take the ordinary derivative, d by dt f of x of t, y of t. Note it, I'll just note it real quickly. Hmm, looks like a chain rule kind of thing. Now, because we've got all of our functions explicitly, we don't need to use the multivariable chain rule. We've got it as a function of t already. We're going to take the regular derivative. But when we go back to the Lagrange multipliers, we'll see that, yeah, realizing that the multivariable chain rule could apply here is really one way to see the, the idea of Lagrange multipliers when we get there. So this is going to be root 3 root 3 times the, qu the quantity, ah, Product rule, derivative of cosine is minus sine times the existing two sines is sine cubed. And then plus derivative of sine squared is 2 sine cosine times the existing cosine gives you cosine squared. We're going to set that equal to 0. There's a sine t we can factor out. The 3 root 3 we can just delete. And so we get um, sine t 
times minus sine squared t plus 2 cosine squared t equals 0. So either sine t equals 0. Hey, you know what? Did we really care about t here? No. It was a device to be able to label points on the boundary, but it's really not what we care about. We really care about the x and y values. That just says y equals 0. Surprise, surprise, we already knew those were unconstrained critical points. That means that we knew that right here and right here, and in fact all the line in between them and the x-axis, we knew that no matter what direction you go, it's going to be flat. And this says, oh, surprise, if you're on the, the circle and you go tangent to the circle, it's going to give you a flat point, it's going to give you a critical point. And we could say, well, we already knew that, that's not new. But the other one, the other s solution is going to be new. So the other solution is minus, and I'm going to change that to cosine squared. So it was minus sine squared, but one of our tools, of course, is trig identities. And this gets it all in terms of cosine squared. Okay, And so that says that 3 cosine squared t equals, and I'm going to move the other one into 1, cosine squared t equals 1. Uh, 1 third, heh. <laughs> and cosine t equals 1 over root 3. Plus or minus. That's essential. Don't forget your plus or minuses. Now again, now here's where you don't want to get tripped up. If you're focused too much on t, you're like, oh, that's kind of nasty. You've got to break out the calculator. This is not a nice value of cosine. It's a nice value of tangent and cotangent, but that's not the function. Um, but that's only if we really cared about t. Remember why we cared about t. It was the relationship between x and y. Oh, hey, if I know cosine t, then I know x, and it's actually very pretty. x is root 3 cosine t, and so that's just plus or minus 1. When we redo this problem with Lagrange multipliers, we'll see how some of these things, like, oh, surprisingly pretty answer, they come to one more directly with Lagrange. Okay. Now, um, so we've got the points. Let's let's draw. We know that everywhere in here is an unconstrained critical point, everywhere on this axis, including, of course, the endpoints. We got those twice. And we know the value is equal to 0 there of the function. We now know x can be plus or minus 1, and that we're not done when we've just found the x value. So let's see. Remember, this is root 3. This is minus root 3 over here. So x can be plus or minus 1, and we got need to go back and solve for y, okay? And that just go, goes back to the constraint. We know that these are the points we're interested in. We found out that the points where the critical po values are are where x is plus or minus 1. And y just has to be the right value for this to work, okay? Well, y squared is 3 minus x squared, so that's 2. So y is plus or minus root 2. So there's going to be four points that we're going to get that are critical. Uh, at the four positions. So it's going to be 1 plus or minus root 2 and minus 1 plus or minus root 2. Remember, if you used plus or minus in both to try to really be uh, quick, um, you might be, it might be ambiguous. Okay, so now I just need to evaluate. So f along the x-axis, we already know is 0. f of 1 plus or minus root 2, remember that's it, the function is xy squared. And so it's just going to be uh, 2. And f of minus 1 plus or minus root 2 is going to be minus 2. So those two, there's a tie for the max, and there's a tie for the min. These guys are maxes. These guys are mins. And the other guys are just neither. They're critical points, but they're uh, they're more saddly points than, than max or min. So that's a, one way of doing this kind of problem where the boundary is a circle.